So far we've seen examples of the consumer layer of ubiquitous computing, which will likely be its most emphasized aspect. On top of this layer sits the incredible surveillance capability of this technology. Video surveillance cameras are an obvious indicator that you are being watched, but the Internet of Things automated surveillance and tracking grid is merged seamlessly and invisibly throughout the entire environment. In the Internet of Things, Every object, as well as people who are wearing RFID tagged clothes or are using wireless electronic devices will be readable by a computer or wireless network. The objects or person's details, exact location, and other information can be obtained electronically by invisible sensors in sidewalks, roads, or doorways. This convergence of the digital and physical worlds opens a doorway to a whole new kind of surveillance that may give rise to what some call a synchronic society. Dr. Kingsley Dennis, a research associate for the Center for Mobility's Research at Lancaster University, describes a synchronic society in this way. The development of increasingly sentient smart environments will go some way towards creating a more systemic relationship of interconnections and interdependencies between humans, objects, machines, and locality. Here, the emphasis is on an embedded sensory world that will influence and fundamentally alter social practices. Such a cyber-nomadic landscape has been defined by three primary forces of physical-digital fusion, the augmented self, and digitally catalyzed masses. Ultimately, Dennis sees this technology creating a heavily surveilled population inside a global information gridlock that will be nearly impossible to escape. Increasingly, relationships between humans, devices, environments are being merged or steered towards a new construction of social life, one that embeds the individual as a digitally rendered identity within a global information gridlock. If such an irreversible shift is made towards digitally rendered societies, this would arguably lock in a form of monitored controlled society. With such predictions of an increasingly centered and enmeshed global system, it is difficult to see how living off the net will be a choice in the near future. Can a microscopic tag be implanted in a person's body to track his every movement. There's actual discussion about that. You will rule on that, mark my words, before your tenure is over. Can brain scans be used to determine whether a person is inclined toward criminality or violent behavior? You will rule on that. Major computer companies and corporations have foreseen the rising trend of ubiquitous computing for many years. Intel's president, Paul Ardellini, announced recently that the next four decades would be about ubiquitous computing encompassing every aspect of daily life. In a February 2000 document from Hewlett Packard's Internet and Mobile Systems Laboratory, we find that Packard wants to make people, places, and things web present. The document details the infrastructure of the Internet of Things. Our goal is a bridge between the World Wide Web and the physical world we inhabit. It also includes the ability to provide people, places, and things, electronic or otherwise, with a web resource that is used to store information about them and which is automatically correlated with their physical presence. A city evolves. Ancient Babylon. Ancient Rome. 18th century London, urban civilization is evolving. The city of the future that combines high-tech IT infrastructure and information services in the city space, Hwasong Dongtan Yu City, a place where lifestyle of the future becomes a reality. At Hwasong Dongtan Yu City, your dreams become a reality. Right now, an entire city, New Songdo, is being built in South Korea that fully utilizes ubiquitous technology. Ubiquitous computing proponents in the United States admit that while a large portion of the technology is being developed in the United States, it is being tested in South Korea where there are less traditional, ethical, and social blockades to prevent its acceptance and use. The New York Times quotes a consultant for the U-City's construction. Much of this technology was developed in U.S. research labs, 
but there are fewer social and regulatory obstacles to implementing them in Korea. There is an historical expectation of less privacy. Korea is willing to put off the hard questions to take the early lead and set standards. What will happen to traditional notions of privacy in an everywhere world? Will it be utopia or a nightmarish panopticon? Could individuals and dissidents be electronically blacklisted and denied access to cashless payment systems and transit systems as if they were a banned webpage in the Internet of Things? It remains to be seen whether the ubiquitous computing infrastructure can be fully realized, but it is a technological trend with vast ramifications that is worth keeping an eye on.